Hi, my name is KD. This is part two of the session on billing and cost management in OCI. Uh, if you have not uh, seen part one, it would be helpful to review part one before you uh, go to part two. But the topics I cover in the second part are, uh, are independent of what I covered in part one. What we did in part one was essentially a look at uh, the billing and account management options uh, that you can see in OCI console. Uh, we looked at the cost analysis tools that gives you trend lines on uh, how your uh, uh, costs in uh, OCI uh, have performed uh, and you can filter by uh, dates uh, and you can filter by tags and compartments. Uh, you can um, use budgets uh, which uh, let you specify uh, soft limits on uh, how much a particular cost tracking tag or a compartment is allowed to use. You can set up budget alerts uh, so that if, uh, if the projected cost or actual uh, costs are uh, going to be more than a threshold, uh, you can set a, send a custom uh, email to uh, one or more email addresses with the budget alert. We looked at uh, usage reports, uh, which is a CSV file that gives uh, a lot of detail about uh, how the resources are being used in OCI. Uh, one report per 24 hours, and we uh, retain the reports for uh, one year, and each line in the CSV file contains uh, usage of, of one resource in OCI per hour. Uh, in this uh, session, I'm going to start with service limits and uh, usage of OCI resources. Uh, then I'm going to cover uh, compartment quotas. Uh, and, uh, and finally, we'll wrap this topic up with some cost management uh, best practices. So this is all part one. So I'm going to skip these slides. Uh, we talked about uh, I summarized all these uh, things. Uh, so let's start with the new topic, which is service limits and usage. When you're operating in OCI, it's uh, uh, important for you to know uh, what the uh, default limits for your uh, usage in OCI are. Uh, almost all these limits or most of these limits are soft limits. Uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can check these limits and you can make service requests to get these limits increased right from the OCI console. So important to keep tab off of this. Uh, let's go to OCI console and, uh, and, and see uh, what these, uh, where you can uh, see these limits and, and make the request for increasing these limits as well. Okay, I've logged into my OCI console. You can get to this information from uh, two places. One is you can go to administration and go to tenancy details. And right here you will see uh, your uh, service limits uh, for uh, what you are allowed to use uh, by default in OCI. And the second place is if you go to uh, Governance, uh, this is where you uh, can visit the limits, quotas, and usage page. Uh, this not only gives you your uh, service limits, but it also uh, talks about uh, what your current usage is and how much is uh, available. And uh, if you, and this goes service by service, right? So if you want to, uh, if you want to increase a service uh, limit, you can fill a simple form by providing your contact information. Once uh, you provide that, you, uh, you then specify which service you want to get the service limit increase by. And for that service, which resource are you requesting the increase? You can add uh, additional uh, resources in a single request. Uh, you provide a reason for, uh, for the request and then you submit the request right here. Uh, and uh, we try to uh, look at these requests and uh, uh, try to respond uh, within one business uh, day, but uh, it might take longer in some cases. Okay, the 
next thing we need to or you want to look at is the uh, compartment uh, quotas. Uh, the notion of quotas is that it gives uh, administrators a better control over uh, how resources are consumed in OCI. Uh, quotas enable you to easily allocate resources to compartments uh, using OCI console. We'll look at an example soon. Uh, along with uh, with budgets that we discussed in, in the uh, first part of this uh, topic. Uh, so quotas and budgets combined give you uh, a powerful tool set to manage your spending in, in OCI. Uh, so quotas essentially let you define uh, how much uh, of a particular resource can be uh, used in a compartment and budgets let you create alert on uh, if those uh, 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 budget values are going to be in uh, to be exceeded so combined together you can uh, manage your uh, uh, costs in OCI very nicely uh, in a sense uh, your uh, uh, compartment quotas are similar to service limits that we just looked at uh, but the the biggest uh, difference is that service limits are set by oracle and compartment quotas are set by uh, administrators uh, in the tenancy uh, and uh, uh, compartment quotas uh, are set using uh, uh, policies that allow uh, you to allocate resources with a high level of uh, uh, flexibility. Uh, this policy statement is, uh, uh, is, these policy statements are written in a, in a fairly simple declarative uh, language which is similar to the IAM policy language. Let's take a uh, look at um, the quota uh, policy language and how you can write these statements. Uh, there are uh, three types of uh, quota policy statements. There are set statements, unset statements, and uh, zero statements. Uh, the set statements uh, set the maximum number of a cloud resource that can be used uh, for a compartment. Uh, so this is what you use to uh, specify uh, the limit. Uh, the unset uh, statement uh, resets uh, the quotas back to the uh, default uh, service limits. So uh, you can uh, unset what you had set previously. Uh, and then there is the zero statements. Uh, the zero statements actually removes uh, access to a cloud resource completely uh, for a compartment. Uh, when you are uh, uh, writing a statement, uh, you know you see these uh, uh, three examples for the three type of statements. Uh, the the very first uh, thing you do is start with a action keyword. The action keyword can be set, unset, or zero, uh, and uh, after that action keyword, uh, you then specify the name of the uh, service family. Uh, for example, you can specify uh, compute or block volume or uh, uh, or any other uh, OCI uh, service family name here. Uh, this is followed by the quota or the quotas, uh, plural uh, keyword. Uh, following that uh, comes the name of the quota. Uh, the name of the quota varies uh, with the, the uh, service family. Uh, an example is uh, for that for the compute family, uh, uh, the uh, name could be something like vm-standard2-16-count. So that's a that's a quota name keyword. Um, a good thing about uh, using names is that uh, you can specify uh, wild cards. So rather than mentioning VM dash standard something something, you can just say VM dash uh, star, right? Or VM dash standard star, and then you know uh, this would match all the wild card characters for you. Makes it uh, more flexible and easy. Uh, and then. Uh, after name, uh, what you put depends on the type of the statement. Uh, for the set statements, uh, then you put the uh, value of the uh, quota here. Uh, 
and then you specify uh, the compartment uh, for that quota and uh, uh, in the very end uh, there is a optional condition statement um, this condition statement uh, can be for example uh, where uh, request dot region is equal to uh, us dash uh, phoenix dash one right uh, currently the conditions uh, that uh, that can be used are request dot region and request dot ad where it is uh, available uh, some other uh, examples uh, you know the, the first example here uh, only allows uh, uh, one compute instance uh, in a in a compartment called it uh, and for a single region uh, the first statement says zero compute quotas in tenancy so it's uh, it's removing um, access to uh, all uh, compute resources and and then it only uh, allows uh, uh, one kind of instance vm standard 2 dash uh, uh, 1 and uh, it allows uh, uh, only up to uh, uh, 10 of these in in the compartment it and uh, uh, and then only in the region un us phoenix uh, region in this case uh, the second example also zeroes out the compute quotas and then um, uh, and then it unsets uh, any uh, quotas uh, on um, on uh, on VM dense uh, uh, IO one kind of shape. Uh, so the uh, limits are now enforced by the uh, default uh, service limits. Uh, the uh, Compartment quotas can be set on the root compartment, uh, and uh, an administrator can set quotas on their own compartments and any child compartments. Uh, the quotas set on a parent compartment override the quota set on child compartments. So this way, uh, you know, the administrator of a uh, parent compartment can create a quota on a child compartment, but the child compartment cannot. Uh, override uh, what the parent compartment uh, quota policy statement says uh, and in terms of uh, precedence uh, uh, if there is more than one policy uh, for uh, for the same resource the most restrictive policy is actually applied and uh, the service limits always uh, take precedence over quotas Although it is possible to specify a quota for a resource that exceeds the service limit for that resource, uh, it does not really mean anything. Uh, the the uh, service limit is, uh, is is still going to be uh, enforced. If you need to increase the service limit, you'll have to make that uh, request like I uh, discussed before. So let's uh, uh, look at uh, setting uh, uh, quota policies. So let me uh, log into my uh, OCI console. Uh, and the quota information is available under uh, uh, governance, limits, quotas, and usage. Um, and uh, and then uh, let's look at quota policies. Uh, in quota policies, I've already created uh, a policy. Uh, this policy, in this case, uh, is around uh, uh, block volume. So you can uh, set uh, block storage quota uh, volume count to 10 in, in compartment call IT. So no more than uh, uh, 10 uh, block volumes can be created there. Uh, let's uh, look at an example of creating um, a new quota policy. Let's call it uh, uh, the ADW policy.
and this is where you can specify one or more uh, languages so you can say set like the example I gave you set database uh, quota adw dash ocpu dash count to two in compartment uh, a compartment called it uh, uh, I have a typo okay uh, and uh, to look at all the different uh, options you can actually go to the uh, documentation uh, page on this documentation page uh, for uh, quotas uh, you can get detailed information on uh, uh, all the uh, keywords and uh, uh, scope and you have descriptions of this course service by service so this shows how to specify quotas on uh, on different uh, uh, compute services and it gives some useful examples um, as well okay uh, with that let's uh, uh, wrap up and and summarize uh, so the cost management best practices is essentially uh, everything we discussed in uh, uh, in part one and part two of this topic are, are good practices that you should uh, follow for effective uh, uh, cost management uh, in OCI uh, for example, you can use the cost analysis tools to uh, filter uh, the uh, the data that you are interested in, and uh, then you can look at uh, trends of how things are uh, are changing over time, um, or with uh, cost tracking tags, etc. Uh, you you should create uh, um, uh, budgets uh, that uh, uh, that match your commitment, and you should set up. Uh, uh, budget alerts so that you get an early warning if your spending increases uh, and you're uh, getting a risk of, uh, of of an overage so you can receive uh, emails about that uh, you should uh, use uh, uh, cost tracking tags uh, to uh, allocate uh, costs in more um, granular ways and uh, these cost tracking tags uh, can be used with uh, with budgets as well uh, you should uh, uh, use separate uh, compartments uh, for cost management and when you have a uh, uh, compartment uh, let's say you have a compartment per department there are yeah, there are multiple departments uh, sharing the same OCI tenancy uh, it's easy to then uh, do cross charging uh, based on uh, you know which compartment is uh, costing how much in OCI and it's also easy to um, to then set up uh, compartment quotas like we just discussed uh, so that you can uh, uh, allocate different amount of resources for for different uh, compartments more uh, easily uh, you should enable uh, monitoring on all your resources and uh, you can uh, get uh, usage report uh, data and you can uh, uh, and you can um, now uh, import the CSV files from usage reports uh, to uh, analyze your costs and uh, and create your custom uh, dashboards. All right, so that brings us to the end of uh, part two of this uh, uh, session. Thank you for your time.